Owen, can you sum up what this game means to you and means to English cricket? Um, it, it means a huge amount to me and to everybody in the change room. Uh, it's a culmination of four years of hard work, dedication, a lot of planning, and it presents a huge opportunity to, to go and try and win a World Cup. Uh, I think for everybody around the country, the support we've had throughout has been unquestionable. And that's, as a team, that is, you know, it makes you feel extremely lucky to be part of a team that has that sort of support. I think it presents another opportunity for both teams and the ICC to, to sell the game on a huge platform. Um, you know, two very strong sides, hopefully produce a really good game of cricket. Um, it's on terrestrial television around the country and obviously various outlets online but it presents a huge opportunity for us to sell this great game. And how do you feel personally today? It's a familiar venue, but very different circumstances. How do you ensure that that doesn't distract and you maintain positive? Yeah. I think, well, I certainly feel pretty relaxed. It's nice to be home. I'm also very excited about tomorrow. Um, we're going to enjoy the game regardless. We're going to try and take in as much as we can. It's a World Cup final. We're not going to shy away from that. As long as anything doesn't affect performance, we're going to try and take it in. You mentioned that national excitement. Has it manifested itself in any way in the last couple of days since you made the final? Not, re not really. Um, I think just the general level of excitement, messages you get through, people you meet on the street. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And what will be your final words to the players tomorrow before you step out? Uh, I always get asked this before games. You, you never actually know what you're going to say until the morning of the game. You have to go in, see what the mood is like in the camp. If it's down, you need to pick it up. If it's too high, you need to bring it down. Um, but majority of the time, over the last three or four games, it's, it's been right on point. I haven't had a lot to do. Finally for me, is everyone fit? Is Johnny Best OK after his Yeah, everybody, everybody's fit, so that's good news. Sure. Oh, I just wonder, firstly, do you think you can play as well again as you did against... Australia and secondly do you think you'll need to? Um, I think we will need to yeah New Zealand are an extremely tough side with a lot of experience a lot of skill they were the best side in the group stage and they improved very similar to us from the group stage to the semi-final performance so we're, we're striving to improve on our performance no doubt they will um, so yeah. Oh, and you, you've effectively been playing knockout cricket since the, the game against India. Has that helped you sort of hone your approach and mindset going into tomorrow's game? Yeah, I, I think it's actually it has helped us because it's lent itself to, to actually being more positive and aggressive and, and a bit smarter about how we play. And it's sort of been a last chance saloon since Durham, which has been nice in a way. No. Oh, and. Um... <laughs> There was a nice little reunion out there just then with you and Brendan. What did you just have a chat about? And is there a kind of nice symmetry, I guess, in the fact that it is you and New Zealand after they were so influential in, in this whole rejuvenation? Yeah, um, we just caught up outside. Um, Brendan's obviously a very good friend of mine. He, he spoke about us making the final and playing New Zealand because he had to fly home for the semi-final, but he was flying back if New Zealand made it. So. Um, he's delighted that they did, and um, yeah, he's, he's in good form. We're at the back of the room. Great. Owen, what are the weaknesses in Kane Williamson's game? Uh, his backing up, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chris at the front here. <clears throat> Sorry. I was actually going to ask you about Brendan McCullum as well, but um, I just want to know how much of an inspiration and how integral has he been in this team's kind of renaissance, if you want to call it that, since the last World Cup? Um, I, th I think he has had a, quite a bit to do with it. He, well, you, you could probably say about world cricket as opposed to just directed me, and I obviously know we're, we're close mates, and he's taught me a lot about leadership. Um, and... I think in 2015, the way that New Zealand played, very similar to the way that they're playing at the moment, they, they proved to, to absolutely everybody that you can perform at the highest level and, and get to the top uh, by being yourselves and not trying to be somebody else or a different team or be somebody that is a bit of a novelty for everybody else. So that's, that's quite cool. Oh, in, <clears throat> you've only used 13 players in the tournament, so that's two players who haven't played, another one or two players 
who didn't make the squad, who've played a big role, your family and friends have helped you. Just tell us a bit about, there's only going to be 11 people on the park tomorrow, but this, you know, you're doing it for a, a lot of different people, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. And I think people up and down the country as well. Um, I think that the two guys that haven't played a part have been brilliant for us. Um, we always talk about the squad. We never talk about the final 11. The final 11 is extremely difficult to get into. So having that responsibility of, of going out and doing what you do uh, is more important. Um, so uh, what it means to friends and family is, is unbelievable. We, we had a lot of friends and family in the change room after the semi-final uh, because they're as important to our success as, as it is to us and everybody around the country. Um, so it's important to share it. Hi. Uh, it, it looks pretty green out there, surprisingly green. Um, obviously, you know the conditions well. Do you have any thoughts on that? And is it a bowl first wicket? Uh, from afar, it looks greener than it is. There isn't a lot of grass on the wicket, mill-wise, so it would probably exaggerate how it looks. I think it'll look different. If the sun comes out for a few hours, it'll look different in a few hours. It'll go wider and burn it off. Depends on how hard the wicket gets. Yes, go ahead. Hi, Faye Barker, ITV News. Um, a World Cup final for a cricket match doesn't get much bigger than this. Have you allowed yourself to imagine lifting that trophy tomorrow? And if it's an England win tomorrow, what do you think that means for the game of cricket in this country? Um, I haven't allowed myself to think about lifting the trophy. Uh, cricket and, and sport in particular is very fickle. If you ever get ahead of it, it always seems to bite you in the backside. So. So yeah, I haven't done that. And, and f for us to win it, I think, around the country, it, it would be awesome. Great for the game. I think uh, quite iconic in, in spread, certainly uh, young kids' memory, particularly if they're watching it at home. Um, and we managed to lift the trophy. It'd be, it'd be awesome. Hello, Jordan Jarrett Bryan here, Channel 4 News. We're seeing what Jofra Archer brings on the field of play. Tell us a little bit about what he's like off the field of play. And just secondly, with the game tomorrow being on free-to-air television, just t tell us a little bit more how important you think it is the governors that run the game capitalise on what's sure to be a huge viewing audience tomorrow. Yeah, um, Jofra's a pretty relaxed guy. Um, very cool. He's probably not the coolest in the change room. Chris Wilkes has that mantra um, but yeah he's, he's just a very relaxed guy he, he enjoys doing not a lot relaxing uh, he enjoys playing a lot of xbox um, yeah, he's, a, he's a young guy who's enjoying his cricket um, i think it i think it is important regardless if it's terrestrial or, or or what outlet that that whoever the target audience is and certainly for us or, or the icc it, it should be young kids if, if that's online doing it online, um, getting hopefully more exposure to the players and, and more insight into what cricket is about and, and what principles and, I suppose, disciplines it brings to, to young people being involved in it. Take a couple more. Oh, and um, you've spoken a lot about uh, how your team has changed over the last four years and, you know, modelling yourself off Brendan and all that sort of stuff. How do you think the Black Caps team has changed in that time, and how do you think they've changed from Brendan's captaincy to Kane's captaincy? I think the two boys have two different styles of captaincy. I think that's that's important for any leader. I think if you're trying to be somebody else, it's it's never going to work. You have to be yourself. Um, otherwise, the messages that you give to your team or anything that you try and do isn't authentic, and I think people spot that straight away. Uh, I think the the progress that they've made or continue strides that they've made, um, they've just been you know, on top of their game since. There's extremely ex experienced players who have continually challenged the best in the world and, and had success doing it. Yes, on this side on the left. Hi, Evan. Um, New Zealand, apart from Afghanistan, are the only side that haven't scored 300 in this tournament, but they have, they're also the side that have you know, defended a lot of 240s, 280s. You know? Um, you guys obviously do a lot more deeper analytics of the game, so how do you look at this particular equation between bat and ball about what your opponents are doing? Yeah, I think in general throughout the tournament the scores have been a lot lower than they have previously here in the last three or four years. Uh, us adjusting to that has been harder work than it normally is, um, but New Zealand have done it brilliantly and Lords isn't ever a high scoring ground, so 
I'd say tomorrow isn't going to be a high scoring ground, so it'll be a bit of a battle. We'll finish with Julian. Yeah. You say you say it'll be a, a bit of a battle, Owen. Um, what impresses you most about New Zealand, and what where do you see the game being won and lost tomorrow? It's difficult to say because they're such a stable side. Uh, they offer threats throughout with the ball, and they're they're just a stable side with the bat. Um, I think there will be times, you know, throughout the game tomorrow where it, it could be won or lost. Um, but I think it, I think it'll be a really good game of cricket. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.